In this video, we're going to be talking about the nine different types of SysML diagrams and give examples about each SysML diagram type. So with that, we'll get started. So what you're seeing here is the SysML diagrams. We've got behavioral diagrams, requirement diagrams, and structural diagrams. Um, and we have specific types of behavioral diagrams. We have activity diagrams, sequence diagrams, state machine diagrams, and use case diagrams. And we also have special types of structural diagrams, such as these four down here, block definition diagram, internal block diagram, package diagram, and parametric diagram. Parametric diagram is a special type of internal block diagram. These ones that are in italics right here at the top, behavior diagram, system L diagram, and structural diagram, these are abstract entities. You cannot have a and view a single structural diagram. You would have to select internal block diagram or package diagram to be able to add elements to it. So these are abstract is, is what we're trying to get at here. So the nine different diagram types that we're talking about are uh, activity, sequence, state machine, use case, requirement, block definition, internal block, package, and parametric. Those are the nine that we're going to be looking at today. And those are the, the total list of system L diagrams. So starting from the left, We'll start with the behavior diagrams, activity diagram. So here is an example of activity diagram. These are actions, this is logic. Um, these are some more logical elements, very simple one. Moving on, sequence diagram. So we have our lifelines up at the top here. And as we go down these lifelines, time marches on. So these items happen, number one happen before number nine. Um, additionally, we've got some constraints here. They're, they're like 20 minutes. So this is all very time oriented and, and message oriented. State machine diagrams, our system of interest for this one is the oscillating fan. And we have different states in which the oscillating fan can live. The unpowered state, the powered state, low speed and oscillate. These can happen at the same time or medium speed and static. Um, this will just show you the different states an oscillating fan can be in. The use case diagram. We have our toasting system, which is our system of interest. We have our actor over here, and we have our use cases right here. And um, it's it's basically, this happens at the very beginning of a project when, when you're trying to determine what the system shall do and who is touching the system. Our block definition diagram, what you're looking at right now is a block definition diagram. It, um, can break down a system, decompose a system, as well as show a taxonomy. So what you're looking at right now is a taxonomy. The internal block diagram, this is the inner workings between parts. So after you've created a block definition diagram, you would be able to show how parts interact with each other. So what you're seeing here, these are all part properties. And then these green squares are ports. And then you have uh, the connectors that are connecting the ports, and then on top of that, you have item flows. Moving on to package diagram. This is our navigation page. Um, it's basically the intent of the package diagram is to show the structure of the model, not the system of interest. The decomposition of the model. The parametric diagram is a type of internal block diagram. It's a special type that has to do with math. So um, this is our constraint. And then these are our value properties. And um, you can run simulation and solve equations. And then lastly, we have a requirement diagram where you have requirements in here. And this is very simplified, but uh, you can decompose your requirements. You can um, satisfy or trace or refine or verify. You can add different elements within here and add a bunch of different uh, relationships as well. So that's a high-level walkthrough of all the different types of SysML diagrams. Hope that helped.